How do you thoroughly draft an essay so that you are including the most relevant evidence? In this lesson, you will learn how to draft an essay by utilizing the Peel method of paragraph writing. We've been organizing our claims in preparation for an argumentative essay that addresses this prompt. Before we begin our lesson, let's review the writing process. First, we did a close reading of Mrs. Manstey's view. Then, we looked at the prompt, or the assignment. The third step is to begin planning. After mapping out your plan, you move to step four, which includes crafting the draft and revising the paper. The final step of the writing process is the editing and publishing. We've already addressed the first three steps, so for this lesson we will spend time on step four, drafting our essay. Now there are a lot of different ways to draft a paragraph, and honestly, the more tools you have for crafting an essay, the better writer you become. For today's lesson, we're going to follow the PEEL method. PEEL is an acronym, and each letter stands for a unique component of writing. P stands for point of paragraph. This is your topic sentence, so you want to make sure that you identify the main argument of each paragraph, which supports your thesis. The E stands for evidence. You use textual evidence to locate that you located in the planning and generating phase of the writing process for this part of the paragraph. The other E stands for explanation of evidence. At this stage, you are evaluating and explaining the textual evidence you just presented in the paragraph. Finally, the L stands for link back to thesis. You want to make sure that each piece of evidence you provide in your essay connects back to the overall purpose of the paper. You will repeat this section for each piece of evidence you provide in your body paragraphs. So when you're drafting the paragraphs, we should follow these four steps that utilize the Peel method. First, write down the purpose of the paragraph. Then, write down the evidence from the outline that supports the paragraph. Third, explain how each piece of evidence supports or proves the paragraph. And four, link the paragraph back to the thesis. All right, so the first thing I need to do is write down the purpose of the paragraph. In order to do this, I'm going to take out the outline I already created. Remember, we're starting with our body paragraphs, not the introduction. We'll look at the introduction in another lesson. It looks like my first body paragraph is going to be about the counterclaims. Now, I'm going to take out my paper so that I can write. So this paragraph is about what the opposing view believes. This viewpoint believes that Mrs. Manstey is a victim, and the points I talk about deal with the physical and social environments. I'm not disproving these claims in this paragraph. I'm just stating the opinion of the other side so that I can disprove these claims in later paragraphs. So what could I say? How about many critics would argue that Mrs. Manstey is a victim of her social and physical environment? Yeah, I think this will work because it recognizes the other side of the argument. So now that I've got the point of my paragraph or my topic sentence, I can now write down the evidence that supports the paragraph. At this point, I'm just going to go through my outline. I need to introduce my textual evidence about Mrs. Manstey's desire to live in the country. What if I were to write something like this? When Mrs. Manstey was younger, she wanted to live in the country, but that desire faded with age, and it was perhaps this lost desire which made her cling too fervently to her view from her window. Yeah, I think this sounds good because it provides a reason as to why Mrs. Manstey would be so attached to the view. Okay, so now I need to ask myself, how does the evidence support the paragraph? Well, on my outline, I wrote that this physical environment is compromised by the construction of the addition. I can write something like this. When this physical environment is compromised by the construction of Mrs. Black's addition, Mrs. Manstey is left with no choice but to commit arson in hopes of saving her view. And for the last step, I need to think how I can link this back to the thesis. Well, because this is a paragraph on counterclaim points, it really doesn't support my thesis. And I plan on disproving this claim in another body paragraph. So I'll link this example to the purpose of the paragraph by saying that because Mrs. Manstey's physical environment is compromised, some critics would argue that it does make her a victim. I like this sentence because it leaves room for me to come back and show how this argument is incorrect. Now with, other, with the other three body paragraphs that support my thesis, I will be linking each example back to the thesis. So I just finished the Peel method for the first point in my outline. I'm now going to repeat the last three steps, evidence, explain, and link for the remaining two points. This is what I've come up with for the other two points of the paragraph. 
The biggest social issue presented in the story is the struggle to communicate between Mrs. Manstey, who's part of the lower class, and Mrs. Black, who's part of the upper class. When Mrs. Manstey is talking to Mrs. Black about the extension, Mrs. Black says, Dear me, dear me, that is too bad, isn't it? Why, I never thought of that. To be sure, the extension will interfere with your view, Mrs. Manstey. Wharton capitalizes the letters in will for emphasis. She wants the reader to understand that Mrs. Black thinks Mrs. Manstey is nuts. I don't think Mrs. Manstey ever stood a chance convincing Mrs. Black to stop the extension because a woman from the upper class wouldn't allow herself to be persuaded by someone from the lower class. This social injustice would automatically make her a victim. Critics may also claim that Mrs. Manstey is in fact deceived by Mrs. Black during their conversation when Mrs. Black promises that she will send word to the builders this very night. Mrs. Black never intended on sending word to the workers because the very next day is when the construction begins. Critics would say that this shows that Mrs. Manstey is deceived by another person, which is part of the definition of a victim. However, no matter how people try to prove that Mrs. Manstey is a victim of her social and physical environments, they cannot account for the fact that Mrs. Manstey's actions, not the two environments, result in her death. Now, I continued working through my outline and I wrote each body paragraph utilizing the Peel method. When I finished, I ended up with almost three full pages of my essay. The only thing I'm missing is the introduction and conclusion, but now that I have my body paragraphs, my introduction and conclusion will come much easier because I've already written the meat of the paper. So now that we've completed our body paragraphs, let's review the writing process. We've been working on drafting the body paragraphs. In the next lesson, we're going to stay here and work on crafting the introduction. Now, drafting is an important step in the writing process, and utilizing the Peel method to draft your body paragraphs will help you craft a well-written essay. So, when you are using the Peel method, you should follow these four steps. First, write down the purpose of the paragraph. Second, write down the evidence from the outline that supports the paragraph. Third, explain how each piece of evidence supports or proves the paragraph. And four, link the paragraph back to the thesis. In this lesson, you have learned how to draft an essay by utilizing the Peel method of paragraph writing.